Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever wondered whether your friend or a loved one is really a psychopath? Well, now you can figure it out with this new and improved technology. Introducing the Psychopath Checklist Analysis Test. This is what I've been looking for for my whole life. What's going on? Who are you? Oh, don't worry about it. Just take this test. Oh, don't worry about it. it just take a test. Okay. <laughs> Go. Yep, everything checks out. The Psychopath Checklist Revised, or this PCLR test, has been used in multiple studies to confirm many theories about psychopathy. In one study in, in Wisconsin, they took 155 adult male inmates who were recruited from a medium security correctional facility and participated in this study. The 13 subjects were excluded because of excessive head motion during the scan, however. Participants were selected on the following inclusion criteria. For the first one, they had to be greater than 45 years old, and they had to have an IQ that was less than 70. And they also had to have no history of psychosis or bipolar disorder and no history of significant head injury or post-concussion symptoms. They also had no current use of psychooptic psycho medications in and informed consent was obtained both orally and in writing. Psychopathy was assessed for all participants by using the, the PCLR test, and it was a 20-item scale. And the scores for each item were rated as 0, 1, or 2 based on the severity of each trait determined from a semi-structured interview and a file review administered by trained research assistants. They used different facets and factors throughout the PCLR test. Factor 1 was an interpersonal and effective traits, while Factor 2 was lifestyle and antisocial traits. Facet 1 were interpersonal traits, and Facet 2 were effective traits. Facet 3 was lifestyle traits, and Facet 4 was antisocial traits. And scores were used, to use, were used for separate regression analyses. For the, for the group analyses, participants were classified as psychopathic if their PCLR scores were greater than or equal to 30, and non-psychopathic if their PCLR scores were less than or equal to 20. Common results resulted in multiple significant associations between psychopathic traits and cortical activity. Overall psychopathy severity, which was their total PCLR score, were associated with principally with diminished connectivity between frontal and parietal regions, whereas the major subsets of psychopathic traits, including the two-factor and four facets, exhibited distinct patterns of correlations. Factor 1 was linked exclusively to decreased cortical connectivity, whereas factor 2 was linked exclusively to increased cortical activity. Similarity, the facets 1 and 2 were linked exclusively to decreased cortical connectivity, whereas factor 4 Factor 4 was associated with primarily increased cortical activity. We did not find evidence for associations between connectivity and psychopathy score for the comparison sensory networks. Another study that used the PCLR test extensively was one set in Italy, where they used 29 males from Italian jails, and the age ranged from 23 to 67 years old. Participants' aggression was, was assessed by a questionnaire, and they took a questionnaire on coping style. Participants' psychopathy was assessed using the Italian version of the psychopathy checklist, which include 23-point items using the same scale as the American. The analysis shows that both the inmates prevalently use task-oriented coping strategies rather than emotionally-oriented or, or avoidance-oriented strategies, and that they exhibit higher levels of hostility and physical physical aggressiveness than verbal aggressiveness and anger. Furthermore, in comparison with the Italian normative samples, the participants in this study showed medium levels of psychopathy. I graded your test and see the score was. What? What do these results mean? I don't know. Well, it means your friend is a psychopath. A psychopath? I thought this wasn't even a psychopath test. Um, it's an LR test. Your friend tricked me. That's unfortunate. So what does this mean? I'm a criminal? Not exactly. There is a difference between criminal and non-criminal psychopaths. It all depends on the decisions you make. In order to see if there was a difference between non-criminal and criminal psychopaths, a study was conducted. A group of 22 criminal psychopaths was compared against three control groups. 16 non-criminal psychopaths, 11 criminal non-psychopaths, and 13 non-criminal non-psychopaths, and they used a paradigm test to test whether criminal psychopaths' poor ability to recognize facial expressions of fear can be generalized to to non-criminal psychopaths and to other non-psychopathic criminals. Both criminal and non-criminal psychopaths showed significantly worse performance than non-psychopaths in the detection and discrimination of fear in facial expressions. These results suggest that psychopathy, independently of its manifestation in criminal behavior, seems to be related to the poor ability to identify and discriminate facial expressions of fear. We established that incarcerated psychopath criminals can be disassociated from non-criminal individuals with comparable impulsive and antisocial personality tendencies based on the degree to which reward-related brain regions interact with brain regions that control behavior. Some people act according to their impulsive and antisocial personality, while others are able to behave adaptively despite reward-related urges. Thanks so much. It's nice to know that there's a difference between criminal psychopaths and non-criminal psychopaths, even though my friend is a psychopath. I'm so glad that we can be friends. So glad we're friends.
buy yourself a PCLR test today and find out whether your friends or yourself are psychopaths today.